What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today I have a really interesting match here against a pretty scary team. I just kind of threw together some mods that haven't really been out of the PC box for a while. I gotta stretch out the old pokey legs. Plus, I feel like they're really fun Pokemon to use, and they can kind of, you know, they can result in some pretty good shenanigans. Anyway, getting into the match here, they decide to lead off with Tyranitar, as I go into uh, Sandslash. Sandjobs is actually in his element here, as the sand is about to be up, and he's just soaking that shit in. Um, interesting lead matchup here, I kind of just wanted to prioritize getting the Stealth Rock up. Uh, looking at the team preview in the beginning, they have a very scary team with everything except for a Wormadam, for whatever reason, so... I mean, shout out to the worm. I, I respect that. Um, but other than that, it's a very kind of standardish OU team. There's uh, Pokemon like a Dragonite. I really want to prioritize getting the Stealth Rock just because that thing's multi-scale is going to be a pain in the ass. Um, so I'd like to get those rocks up. And obviously, you know, Tyranitar has a shit matchup. Ends up switching into the Levitating Washing Machine, who you know would have dodged the Earthquake. However, I just get up the Stealth Rock, and then I get my little sandy ass on out of there because I have a great pivot into the Washing Machine, which is going to be the Cradilly. So I come in on Hydro Pump. I soak that shit up to get nice and hydrated, and at this point, this thing is likely going to switch out, but I'm just going to go right for Elite Seed, just to kind of see what their answer is going to be for the Cradilly. Um, regardless, it's going to put me, put me in a pretty good position. I could potentially start setting up. This is actually a physical attack in Cradilly with Curse, um, so obviously the you know Storm Drain is not going to really help me out, but it's at least a great switch into Water Attacks. Um, so they decide to bring in old red big meaty claws over here. Mr. Crab's looking ass is going to... Uh, go ahead and get seated, which is nice, and I'm actually able to see the leftovers, which is pretty good intel. Whenever you see a scissor, which is damn near every time you play a Wi-Fi battle because nobody doesn't use it, um, <laughs> it can have a couple different options. This thing could be full-out offensive, a lot of the time it's a defensive kind of utility set. And I figure if this thing is coming in on Cradily, it might probably be just to get the defog. Um, so I predict that I decide to go into the Moltres, who comes in on the defog. Um, he gets rid of the Stealth Rock, which is unfortunate, but I do have a solid matchup here in that Choice Specs Moltres can do a whole dickload of damage to pretty much anything they've got. So, old Spicy McNugget here can basically scare the shit out of Scizor and kind of force a switch. And the good news is, nothing really wants to come into uh, Choice Specs Moltres. Um, I mean, if there's not Stealth Rock up, this thing is the absolute goat and we stand Moltres in this household. So I could decide to go for the Fire Blast. I was thinking I could go for the U-turn and get a pivot, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going full blast on these bitches. I go right for the Fire Blast, as in comes the Washing Machine. Now this is gonna do a lot of damage regardless. I actually end up getting a critical hit, knock it to red, and then the Sandstorm just goes away. Like right, right on cue, it would have actually knocked it out and that would have been extremely satisfying because Rotom Wash is another one of the Pokemon that I've pretty much hated playing against since it came out. It is just way too damn good, and it's literally an, an issue pretty much every time. Um, but I obviously have to switch out of here. I don't want to go for another Fire Blast and miss and get fucked. I need to save uh, Moltres for the Scizor. So I figure Cradilly is a safe answer as it ends up being a trick set, and it tricks me a Choice Scarf. So now you know, I'm working with, with uh, a Choice Scarf Cradilly. Got my eight dicks in my, on my head just floating around looking fast as hell. However, I'm not nearly fast enough to still <laughs> outspeed. Um, so the Rotom is able to go for the Volt Switch, and that's extremely unsatisfying because, like, boy, would it have been nice to get rid of that freaking washing machine. So I have to deal with that thing later, and I just go right for the Leaf Seed. Even though I'm Choice Scarf, I figure Scizor is probably going to come in, and I can kind of make this thing's day a little bit more inconvenient if I get that seed off. So that's exactly what I do, and I'm not super afraid of the Scizor. Um, I do kind of want to conserve Cradilly because this thing is an absolute beast for some reason. People just cannot kill the Dilly, and I'm I'm all about it. So, um, I decide to go for the switch here, and I'm not really sure what this thing's going to want to do. I figure it's likely going to go for the pivot, but I can't really stay in and take needless damage. Plus, I'm stuck into Leech Seed, and the, you know, that's recipe for a bad time. So, I bring in Sand Jobs once again, and this thing it does, in fact, just go for the U-turn. My plan is to be able to get that Stealth Rock back up after this thing gets out of here, and then, you know, maybe try to do some other Sand Slash shit, which isn't much, because... BDSP was not kind to Sandslash and that he doesn't get access to knockoff anymore and that just really really puts my titties in a tussle. So he ends up going into Dragonite. This thing comes in for absolute free and doesn't even pay the Stealth Rock toll so that really sucks and now I'm in a position where this Dragonite is likely going to start setting up and I've got to figure out an answer for this thing quick. So uh, I decided to go for the Night Slash. Now the reason for that is because I know it's going to Dragon Dance and if I can get some chip damage off to the point where I break its multi-scale 
And then all I gotta do is bring in the Focus Sash, Frost Slash, Taken Out Rage, and then kill it with an Ice Beam. So, it's time for Sand Slash to execute. I go for the Night Slash just to get some damage, and it does absolutely nothing to this Tubby Bastard, and it ends up being leftovers. So that's actually quite unfortunate, because in a few turns, he's gonna be, you know, back at full, and extremely annoying. So... I have a couple options here. I could try to set up the Stealth Rock. It's going to help me later on in the late game. I figure I could probably take out this Dragonite regardless, so I opt to go for the Stealth Rock. And somehow, by the sheer will of the Sand Gods, I'm able to live that with one HP, which is actually insane. So, at least Sand Slash has a little bit of bulk going for him. I mean, this thing's mostly on this team just for Rapid Spin support, because my team really kind of needs it. Um, but other than that, really not a whole lot of utility you get out of Sand Slash these days. There's way better options, like Donphan, but, you know, fuck it, he looks cool and he's shiny, so I use him. Uh, anyway, one more Outrage is gonna take me out, and unfortunately, after the leftover recovery, uh, this thing is gonna be back in multi-scale range, which absolutely blows. So, what's actually even a large kick to the nuts was... It would have been better had I not lived with 1 HP, because if I didn't, this thing wouldn't have taken one more turn of leftover recovery. And then I would have been able to bring in Frost Slash one turn earlier, where its multi-scale isn't activated, and then an Ice Beam kills. But now, I've got to kind of just make do with what I've got. So, I go for the Ice Beam. This thing is going to be faster because of the plus one. And now at full HP, it's going to take half damage from any attacks. And that is... Not what you want to see when you're about to get fucked by this big old derpy dragon because a plus one Dragonite against my team is not really ideal. So it does actually get confused there. I go for the Ice Beam because of that ability. It is unfortunately able to live and it is faster. So either this thing, I get lucky and it hits itself in confusion, which would be absolutely amazing, or I just get destroyed here. So I stay in, I go for another Ice Beam. My dude's got the duckies on his head and ends up going for the Earthquake. It does not hit itself in confusion, unfortunately, and that takes care of the Frost Lash. So, interesting choice by running the leftover Dragonite actually saved him, whereas I feel like Lumberry in pretty much every other scenario is, like, way better. But, of course, you know, I try to make Frost Lash do some shit and I just get punished by freaking Dragonite. So, now, at least I have a chance here. I have a choice banded group of hot dogs and I do have the Sucker Punch. So. This thing's looking like it's pretty much in Choice Banded Sucker Punch range. I obviously have to go for it. Unfortunately, he lives it with 1 HP, because literally, why wouldn't he? It, <laughs> uh, but luckily, it actually does hit itself in Confusion, so... There's a little bit of luck on my side, and you love to see that. So thank God, Dragonite is taken care of. You know, I did have to lose my Frost Slash, but sometimes is the price you pay. So... Um, unfortunately, I am Choice Banded into Sucker Punch here, so obviously with Scizor coming in, I kind of have to switch out. And I decide to go Moltres. Um, I'm thinking probably Bullet Punch, and this is what gives me a little bit of information here. So he, um, luckily for me, does not go for the Bullet Punch, ends up going for the Defog. So he's really concerned about that Stealth Rock being taken care of. I keep putting those rocks up, he keeps blowing them away, and it's just like, the fuck, man? I don't, it, what do I gotta do to keep these rocks up? It's really... Like, not that big of a deal at this point in the match because Dragonite's dead, but, you know, it's still nice to have him. Um, but still, this puts me in a pretty good position here because I know the Scizor, obviously, about allergic as hell to fire, needs to switch out of here, and I can go for the U-turn. Get myself a nice little pivot as I actually predict the, um, the Tyranitar to come in. So, this works out quite nicely because I can get a little bit of chip on this thing with the U-turn, and then I have, like, the best switch in in the game on a U-turn into a Tyranitar switch which is going to be, of course, the ground hot dogs. This thing's arena trap. It basically makes it so Tyranitar cannot do anything except for stay in and accept the fate of being quaked by these thugs. So, um, free switch into the Dug Trio. Obvious move here is just to go for the Earthquake, and that's able to allow me to take care of the Tyranitar, which is great. Honestly, Dug Trio is like one of my favorite Pokemon to play with. It's like one of the best revenge switch ins in the game, and as you'll see here, I didn't even need the crit, but it takes care of the Tyranitar. And that is pretty solid. Unfortunately, though, this damn washing machine from earlier is still chilling on red health. Plus, to make matters worse, he stole the leftovers from my Cradilly. So even with Sandstorm, it's not going to rack up enough to kill it. And I swear to God, I'm going to just overall, I'm just stop you stop using washing machines in general because of this fucking guy. So, I mean, my clothes are just now dirty forever. Um, so he goes for the Volt Switch. The obvious switch in is the Crate Dilly, but I kind of have to do it. Um, I don't really have any other option, as now this allows him to pivot into the uh, Infernape, which is another Pokemon I hate to deal with, just because it's way too damn good in this meta. Um, but I decided to stay in. I figure Crate Dilly has kind of done the work it needed to do. At least the Rotom is kind of uh, in killable range. So I decided to sack the Crate Dilly. I'm running out of Mons at this point, so it had to be done. But 
But the good news is this does allow me a revenge switch in. So I have a couple different options. Of course, I got three warm hot dogs in my pocket who can come in, kill that little thing with an earthquake, and then unfortunately what would happen next would be the washing machine coming in. Uh, so that's not quite an option. So I know I have a couple different kill conditions here. I decided to go into the Moltres. Now the reason for that is because I know I can take any attack from this thing and then I can kill with an air slash. Uh, and then once that happens, the Rotom can't really come in and do what it would against the Doug Trio. So as much as it is satisfying to get the Arena Trap kill, I decided to go for the Moltres here. Who, by the way, is just freely switching in and out like a fucking field day because of the fact there's no Stealth Rock. And that is uh, really making Moltres look like a damn superstar. So... Uh, I'm able to kill the ape, which is amazing, and now in comes the scissor. So, of course, I am a choice specs Moltres to try to get as much damage out of this thing as possible. Except, in this situation, it really kind of sucks, because, as you'll see, it does not kill with the air slash. And I don't get the flinch, and this thing shows me that it is carrying roost. So, um, the, f the choice items today are really also kind of kicking me in the nuts, because with choice banded Doug Trio, I've been in situations where levitate washing machines there, now I obviously have the flamethrower right there, but I can't click it, and that really blows. So I have to save the Moltres for later. I know this thing is going to be super useful. Obviously, I got to figure out some damn way to kill uh, this Scizor. And I decided to go into the Dug Trio, honestly expecting an attack here, but he actually just goes for another Roost, and I'm just going to stay in. Dug Trio has kind of done what it needed to do here, as I can go for the Earthquake. Even if it bullet punches here, I get a free switch right back into Moltres, and then flamethrower. I just lock myself into that and have a good time. Um, but he actually ends up going for the U-turn, which Doug Trio is somehow allowed to uh, able to live. Um, which tells me this thing was just full defensive scissor, because there's no attack investment. I'm able to live that shit. And the bane of my existence, once again, the washing machine comes in. Um, and of course, you know, I cannot earthquake this thing. So again, the choice items absolutely put my balls in a vice here, and I have to switch out. So, I swear to god, every time this Rotom comes in, the vice grip on my nuts just turns tighter and tighter. And there's nothing you can do about it, he's just got the, the strongest hold. So, I decide to sack the Sharpedo, uh, which would have been a decent late game win condition, however, I figure it's, it, I, the only thing I can really do is go into that, because now this allows a free switch into uh, the Fire Burb. So, um, he obviously has to pivot, ends up going into the Scizor here, and at this point, I've got the Moltres, I've got full strength, I can click, I don't have to click Air Slash, I can literally just click Flamethrower and have myself a heyday. And McNugget is finally getting his chance in the light. Out of the three legendary birds, obviously Moltres and Articuno suck because of Stealth Rock. But Moltres, with, the, with that Specs, is honestly pretty damn nice, and people should not be sleeping on my dude. Um, so he goes for the Bullet Punch as a last ditch effort, I actually hilariously even get the Flame Body. Which is like, yes, take this burn, and then I'm gonna burn you a little bit more, and uh... How you like that? As it does enough to kill like 10 scissors in a row. And finally, <laughs> down goes Big Meaty Claws. Uh, so he's down to two Pokemon. He's got the Rotom and the Wormadam. So the, the Wormadam is the absolute wild card. Uh, luckily, Choice Specs Moltres just is absolutely able to roast and toast this dude. And uh, that's going to take care of it. I do not really know why they're rocking with the Sandy Cloak Wormadam on this team. But... I mean, respect, because that thing absolutely sucks in this gen. I would use it, but it doesn't get, like, any moves. Um, but yeah, final Pokemon is going to be the Rotom, and we do get the satisfying ending of the Flamethrower uh, just killing this fool. So, Moltres, wearing his choice specs, is able to come out on top, and that was quite the long, interesting battle, but, uh, hey, if you watched the entire thing, comment potato, and I will reply. Thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all of you, as always, and I will see you next time. Peace out.